Maker Stack is a business like any other business. You're trying to meet a customer's need. Do searches on particular topics that actually do sell well, and just a few hints, business concepts sell well, new technologies like AI, uh, machine learning, trends in diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging for businesses and other organizations. These are high selling topics. So you should do searches on these terms at all the major agencies like Shutterstock, Adobe Stock, and see what are the images that are selling well? How are they keyworded? This is what MicroStack's all about, is figuring out what sells, figuring out topics that are already doing well for others and seeing if you can add a new spin on them, or finding new niches on your own, reading the news, seeing what the new trends are on the horizon. I had a good string of sales recently with the debt crisis, the debt ceiling being a big, big topic in Washington. I had a number of images and videos ready to go on that subject and they sold really well. So you have to anticipate what's going to be needed in the weeks and months to come and be ready with content on these topics. So. Don't just upload your vacation photos, really watch the news, watch what's selling at the big sites, and create some content accordingly. Now that you've got some ideas on what type of content you want to create, and you know that you're either going to do photography or illustrations or videos to start, you need to determine where do you want to prioritize uploading your first images, videos to. And here are the top agencies in order that I would suggest you prioritize in applying and getting some content reviewed so you can become a regular contributor. Number one for me right now, Adobe Stock. That's the biggest seller for me. I think it is for a lot of people. They are really, in my mind, the 800-pound gorilla of stock right now. The big advantage Adobe has is that they have their creative suite of products that their MicroStock catalog is tied into. So you have immediate access now to tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people using those software packages on a daily basis. So it's a direct tie into lots of creative professionals around the world to get you a lot of exposure and a chance for some real sales right off the bat. Shutterstock for many years was the big player on the block in MicroStock. It has fallen uh, for a lot of people, including myself. Adobe's taken that top spot, but Shutterstock is still, I'd say, number two. Even though Adobe has taken the crown from Shutterstock, Shutterstock does remain a site you need to be at if you want to make some serious money at MicroStock, so make sure you apply there. After the big two of Adobe Stock and Shutterstock, there really is a steep fall off. Now you're into the mid-tier of MicroStock sites. I would place Deposit Photos as the next site you need to contribute to. It's, they have a very easy upload process. I get regular sales from there. Next, I would say CanStock Photo is another decent one. That's, again, mid to lower tier on the MicroStock rankings, but it's easy to upload. You'll get some regular sales. Dreams Time is another one that used to be a very major player in MicroStock. It's fallen quite a bit, but still it's worth having a portfolio there. Their upload process is a little more difficult, but I recommend checking them out. Canva is a great site that's performed well for a lot of contributors, including myself over the years. I still get steady income from them. However, they have temporarily paused taking new contributions as of mid-2023. By the time you're watching this video, that might be no longer the case, but... I'd recommend if you're watching this now and you can't get in, bookmark Canva and keep checking back as it is very much a worthy place to be uploading your portfolio. When it comes to video, you have some additional options to consider. You should, of course, be uploading video to Adobe Stock and Shutterstock. Also consider some sites that really specialize in video, like Storyblocks, Pond5, Motion Array. Of each of these, Storyblocks has been my top performers for video over the years, and I recommend you check them out. Now, uploading at all these different agencies requires applying, and that involves filling out some forms and usually filling out some links to your portfolio that you can show them, this is what my work looks like, this is the type of work I expect to be uploading to your agency, and then they have to judge whether you are someone they want as part of their contributor base. I've put links down below to each of the agencies to get you started in their application process. So once you've been accepted at the agencies, now it's time to develop a routine, just a regular workflow so you can generate consistent content to be sending to the agencies. That's really key here. They need to see that you are going to be constantly providing them with fresh new content that stays plugged into what their customers' needs are. If you simply upload a whole lot of content at once and just let it lie dormant, that's going to punish you in their search result rankings. Your content is going to be seen by the agencies as getting stale over time, not someone they can count on as providing them with a regular flow of new content that's speaking to the customer's needs. To give you an example, my daily workflow is getting up in the morning before I start my regular 9 to 5 job. 
I check out news and I see what are some hot new trends that might spark some ideas for me in terms of creating new content. So early in the day, I have a good idea of what it is I want to create and submit that day. And as I get time throughout the day, I have a chance to create those photos or illustrations. And by the end of the evening, I'm keywording them and uploading at least a couple of photos or illustrations and a couple of videos each night to, again, create that consistency. They see I'm providing the fresh, regular content, and I continue to place well in the search rankings. The subject of keywording may be one of the most important things you make sure you get right. This is like SEO for any website people out there. You have to make sure that you are putting the right terms with your images and videos to make sure you're anticipating what the customer is going to be searching for. Again, if you've done your research, as I mentioned earlier, you're checking out the sites for the highest performing content. What are the top selling images and videos using as their keywords? You should be diving in and seeing what are the common terms that they're using to be drawing in customers to be downloading their content? Not saying just copy and paste their keywords as your own, but get ideas from them. Make sure that you're not leaving out some particular terms that are no-brainers for that topic. I've done it before where I've uploaded some images and videos and saw, oh, geez, I left out this term or that term. Those are obvious ones that I need to go back and out and add. So make sure you're doing your research, really think carefully about putting the right terms in. Most of the agencies allow you to use 50 terms and embed them with your images or upload them when you're uploading new videos. If the agencies feel you're abusing the keyword system, they'll punish you for it. They will reject that content you're uploading with the keywords that aren't relevant to what you're uploading, or they'll just outright ban you and close your account. So be careful. So now you're in at the agencies, you're submitting content on a regular basis, you're sure it's really being keyworded well, you need to be watching what your results are. You need to be going into the dashboards on each of the sites and really watching your uploads, seeing what kind of activity they're getting, what kind of views, what kind of downloads. Some key things to keep in mind are the images may not catch fire overnight. It may take weeks or even months for them to start generating some downloads. You might see zero views, zero downloads for some time. but Watch for those that immediately catch fire. That'll give you some indication on what you need to be creating more of. Not necessarily just copying because you don't want to simply be cannibalizing your own downloads. You want to be doing different takes on subjects that seem to be generating some interest among customers. So watch for those. They should pop out of your daily results. To help you track your activity on your accounts, I recommend doing what I do, which is set up a spreadsheet that helps you track what are the big topics that are selling. You basically, you're putting a notch in each of the columns on the different subject matter that you're creating and seeing which ones are generating the most activity and seeing if you can create more content in a different style on those to really be building on what are the niches that you seem to be getting a foothold in and really building on that success. Now you're probably hearing a lot about artificial intelligence generated images and flooding the microstock agencies creating more competition to the real real life human contributors and is the party over for us i say no i'm still making a good income from microstock and i believe there's opportunity for others as well you can think of ai as just another tool in your toolbox that you can use to upload more images it has to be done right. Judging from the videos I'm seeing on YouTube, there's a lot of people doing it wrong. They're not really taking into account the principles I st shared at the beginning of this video. Microstock's a business. You have to look at what is selling, and it's not just about making crazy images of Darth Vader playing tennis. It's got to be something that has commercial value. I've got another video on YouTube in which I sit down with Midjourney and go through the steps of creating some AI-generated content that is high commercial value that'll be a good add to my portfolio and ideas for generating some for your own. So watch for that video. So to wrap up, you can see there's a lot of things involved in getting started in Microstock, but it is absolutely doable if you do it right. Marketing is key to Microstock. It's not necessarily having the best skills out there. It's being smartest with it, thinking like a customer, identifying what the customer's needs are that aren't being met, and figuring out a way to meet them with your photos, illustrations, or videos. Be sure to watch the other videos on this channel. Subscribe so you don't miss any of the insights I'm sharing from my 15 years in Microstock. Sign up for my newsletter, which has some news from around the industry, some more tips, and exclusive content like a report card I've just put together on the different Microstock agencies. And I'll see you soon.